I'm going to talk about uh, Kimu Live Block Copy. So, what is uh, Live Block Copy? So, in a in a nutshell, it's an operation to copy an in-use guest uh, disk image to a destination image, and switch the guest disk to this destination image on the fly while the guest is running and making use of the disk. Um, you can think of it as a Kimu image copy, but online while the guest is running. So with live migration, we have um, we move the memory and register state from one host to another, but the di guest disk stays put in a usually in a sh in shared storage. With a storage motion, uh, live block copy, also in some product circles they call it a storage motion, uh, the guest uh, disk is copied. This is a standard uh, enterprise scenario where you copy from one shared storage uh, unit to another. Um, so what, what, what is this for? Um, there are several useful things you can do with this. Um, for example, you can move guest images from local storage to a, to a storage unit and vice versa. You can, it's useful for repairs and maintenance tasks. For example, you buy a new storage unit and you want to move your guest disks to it. Uh, and it's also useful to manage guest image, images across storage units for speed and capacity arrangement. Um, we can also use it to do on-the-fly uh, image format conversion, so you can convert from one format to another without shutting down the guest. And we also use live block copy. We're going to use it for merging, uh, for snapshot merging. Uh, I will talk um, more about that. So QCOW2 backing files. Um, with Backing files, you have a, a base image and a, a current image that points to the base, and the current image holds the difference between the base and the current image. That's where the name comes from, copy and write. Um, Rev uh, M uh, implements snapshots using external snapshot files. So. Whenever you want to, to, to create a snapshot, a new image is created and the right point to this new image. So the previous image, SN1, and the graphic there becomes a snapshot. Um, there's a, a command to implement this to, to, to implement this in Kimu Live. It's called snapshot BLK dev. It has been um, merged recently into Kimu. So the problem is that after many snapshots, you, you, you create a large snapshot chain. And whenever you want to read uh, data, for example, from base.image, the, the read process will have to consult all the images in this chain. And so after, after, some, after a point, this, gets, this becomes slow and inefficient. So, we, we merge, at some point we merge the snapshots. Um, basically, you take all the, the images that in, on the chain and you write them to a new image. You collapse them into a single image. Um, so these are the use cases. Um, so the interface for, for, for this new feature. Um, there's some new monitor command, block copy. Uh, there was a new command, block copy, a guest disk, and the path to the, to the new image. And this new image is created externally with a key new image. So you specify the parameters uh, for image format, etc. So how does it work? There are three stages, bulk, dirty, and mirrored writes. So the first stage, bulk, we um, start by allocating a dirty bitmap so that any uh, guest write to the source 
disk is logged in on, onto, the, onto this dirty bitmap. And the sectors, all sectors are copied over to the destination image so that you know you, you have a, a log of what has been changed while you're doing this, this whole copy operation. Then there's the dirty stage where the blocks that have been modified by the guest are copied over. And when the dirty stage finishes, we mirror writes to both source and destination. So we do that so that the, the management application um, knows the management application can, during this period, it will, it will be able to switch to the destination image. But in the meantime, if both Kimu and the destination image crash, either, either of the images are valid. So that's why we mirror writes at this stage. And we keep mirroring writes until a switch command is received from management. And then write, go to the destination image only, and you're done. You've switched to the, to the destination image. So everything's fine. Um, we have a scheme. Uh, but in the meantime, a requirement arises to quickly deploy a guest whose base image is on slower mode storage. So you have a, a base image on, via NFS on a distant, slow, uh, storage unit and you don't want to copy this you don't want to wait a copy to copy this image to local storage so that's the problem that needed to be solved so the IBM guys um, Stefan and Anthony suggested a copy on read scheme so basically you have a, a local image and a re remote image uh, the local image has the remote image as, as, the, as its backing file. And uh, whenever the guest requests a sector read, we copy from the remote image, allocate on the local image. And I had uh, some nice animation here, but uh, it's not working. And uh, Sorry. Yeah, too bad. I mean, I, I, I spent a lot of time doing, doing those animations. <laughs> um, so, Copy and read, yeah. So basically when the guest reads a sector on its image, the, the scheme will copy from the remote image and allocate on the local image. So this takes advantage of uh, locality of reference. And there are two elements to, to, to image streaming. There's copy and read, and the other image in the other um, and the other element is background copy. So while the guest is reading data and the copy and read is copying to the local fast storage, um, there's a background copy that will read every block, every sector in the, in the image, which with copy and write on top, it means in reading uh, the entire image. So after that, you, after, the entire image has been streamed, you can switch, you can remove the reference to, to the remote image. So this was implemented by Stefan and Anthony uh, on the QED image format. Um, the logic, the way they implemented this, they have the logic, the copy and read logic inside the image format implementation but they have a generic interface for streaming the entire image. So um, then comes Kevin and um, makes the observation that streaming and live block copy are essentially the same. It's basically about copying a guest disk image while it's been accessed. The difference is that live block copy copies to an image while image streaming, streaming cop, copies from an image. So Kevin uh, suggests that one implementation could be used to address these two different requirements. And so we come up with this scheme 
called a block stream. There's no name for it yet, but I call it block stream. It's a unified stream and live copy driver. Uh, so it's a block driver, and it implements copy and read as described previously. Uh, it works with any format that supports backing files, and it has an interface to, to sequentially read the entire image, similarly to the QED patches. Um, the advantage is that there is no need to implement anything in the image format uh, drivers to, to support this. Everything is implemented in, in this block driver. So how does image streaming we work with this new block stream? Um, you start a guest with a local image with copy and read enabled on that device. Uh, once the streaming is finished, once all blocks have been copied to the local image, we remove the backing file reference. And you're done. Now storage motion, which was the live block copy, uh, product name with a block stream works by um, having a destination image with the source as a backing file. So the guest is operating on the source image, and you want to copy to a new, to a, to a separate image on a, on a different storage unit, on a local, whatever that you, you need to do. So you create a, a destination image, and then you immediately switch to this destination image. And at this time, management should update its record of uh, of which uh, image the guest is using, so that in case it crashes, it can choose the right one. So at this time, it uh, updates its record. And then all clusters are red with the background copy scheme. And we remove the backing file reference. At this time, the copy operation is finished. The guest is using uh, the destination image. Uh, there's one complication with uh, regarding um, merging snapshots that the block driver must uh, that the, the the block stream block driver must handle, and so in this case um, we will create a new image on top of the chain with uh, the last image as the backing file. And then we want to, to, to get rid of all of this, uh, of the chain from SN1 to last dot image in the bracket there. And so the, the algorithm uh, must uh, copy and write only if the cluster is allocated up in the chain in, in the red bracket. So it has to, to go back and consult all of those images to see if it's allocated or not. And then finally, read all clusters and change the backing file that previously was last image, change to base image, and operation is done. So as you can note, it, this scheme requires uh, copy and write support, requires backing file support. So the very popular raw image format does not support backing files. So an external, external support for, for copy and write for raw images will have to be provided. And uh, it's essentially an on this bitmap uh, that provides allocated information that's a separate, of course, separately from the, from the raw image file. And there's a fellow Robert Wang from IBM working on that already. And that's it. Questions or comments? <laughs>